hi welcome to my youtube channel and today we are going to deliver my topic on poem beauty by john massifield and nature cherishing poet i have already uploaded the first part of this poem in which i have explained the first sentence of the poem and also given a brief description of the poem and a an introduction about John Massifield in that poem i have explained a different poetic devices used in the poem such as similes metaphors how a dictation diction of the poem or the language but or rhyme scheme of the poem a different or i have already talked about the use of these things in this poem so in this part i will explain the poem i will give the explanation of the poem of both of both stanzas so i have already explained the first stanza in the poem uh, in the first part so in this part i will i also again touch the first stanza of the poem and will uh, again also explain the second stanza So now in this part we will discuss the first sentence of the poem before I will again give some brief description brief introduction about this poem The poem is a romantic poem appealing to the senses of the reader the entire scenario of the poem in which the poem has been displayed is dawn of the noon and dusk So the poem talks about three kinds of beauties in this poem throughout the poem that is beauty of nature beauty of music and beauty of his beloved the poet seems to be enslaved and thrilled by the beauty of her beloved he compares beauty of her his beloved with all the bounties of the world but find her the most beautiful in the world so the poet make us a comparison of beauties the poet compares what is beautiful and when what one loves and adores i have seen dawn and sunset on moors and windy hills coming in solomon and beauty like slow old tunes of spain in these lines the fight the poet john massifield says that he has seen dawn he has seen the rising of sun he has witnessed the rising of sun he has witnessed the dawn and the sun moors and windy hills on the dawners the dawners and open all cultivated uplands where which were always covered by flowers So the poet says, "I have seen these, the dawn and dusk on moors and windy hills, which bestow great happiness and satisfaction, like the wonderful music of Spain gives us. The time of dawn and dusk are as pleasing and soothing as the wonderful music of Spain." So the poet implies the use of simile here. The poet makes the readers to comprehend and understand the great. happiness and satisfaction he feels when the with the arrival with the arrival of his beloved by comparing such event with the wonderful music of spain when he says that coming in solomon beauty like slow old tunes of spain now the poet in the third and fourth lines i have seen lady april bringing in the daffodils i have seen the lady april bringing in the daffodils bringing the spring grass and the soft 
warm April rain. In the third and fourth lines, the poet says that he has seen the month of April, the month of spring, uh, the spring season of the year, the the very pleasant year. जिसको हम कश्मीरी मौसम बहार भी कहते हैं जिसको हम मौसम बहार के नाम से जाना जाता है द पॉइंट सेज दैट दिस मंथ दिस सुप्रिंग सीजन ब्रिंग्स द डेफोडेलर्स इन दैट मंथ डेफोडेलर्स फ्लेवर्स आर ब्लॉजमिंग वे है विच दिस मंथ है ब्रॉड विद दम से डेफोडेलर्स फ्रेश क्रॉस सॉफ्ट वार्म रही हियर द पॉइंट हैज परसोनिफाइड द मंथ ऑफ अप्रैल with that of lady april the poet says that he has seen the daffodils blossoming in the month of april he has seen the lovely and fascinating moment he has seen the lovely spring grass in this month and the poet also says that he has enjoyed himself with the soft showers of warm rain in this month so it looks that the poet in this poem focuses on praising the beauty beauty of his beloved and that as beauty of his beloved and beauty of the world in this stanza the poet has talked about the beauty of music spain is music and the beauty of beauty of the nature especially where when he personifies the month of april Now, in the I have seen the lady appear. Now in the third and in, now in the second stanza, I have heard the song of the blossoms and the old chant of the sea, and seen strange lands from under the orchard where sails of ships. I have heard the song of the blossoms and old chant of the sea. seen strange landers from under the orchard white sailors in the opening of the second stanza the speaker or the poet twice more implies personification describing flowers and the sea as if they were capable of singing here as in the first stanza he implies not simply a bond between man and nature but a unity in the but a unity in line 5 poet claims to have heard the song of blossoms the poet claims that he have heard the song of the blossoms when he says i have heard the song of the blossoms and old chant of the sea the line highlights the beauty of nature but it also emphasizes once again the timeless beauty of music The old chant of the seas echoes the earlier reference to the old tunes of Spain, which the poet has given in the first stanza and this and second line of the first stanza. Moreover, the beauty of the land, blossoms, is balanced by the implied beauty of the ocean, a pattern of uh, repeating in line six. Uh, with the reference to strange landers seen from ships when he says and seen the strange landers from under the orchard white sails of ships the allusion to strange landers subtly echoes the exorcism of the old tunes of the spain also significant is that the ships have orchard white sails a beautiful and romantic image that suggests us an earlier and romantic century in so we can say in the first six lines the speaker uh, in the first six lines that is the first sentence and uh, the first two lines of the second sentence in these six lines the poet or the speaker of the poem masfield emphasizes the beauty of nature and music here you have clearly witnessed the how the masfield has praised the beauty of the nature and how he has uh, praised the beauty of the music in these liners but in line 7 however key key transformation 
is be uh, is being reflected here it looks that a transformation uh, we we witness here the uh, transformation in the seventh line when the poet says with you why in the poem is signaled by the word but so in line seven a key transformation is signaled by the use of word but when the poet says but the loveliest thing of beauty god ever has shown to me or her voice and her hair and eyes and the dear red curvy of her lips the poet says in these lines the poet continues his praise of beautiful things in these lines So, in first of all, we will explain briefly the fifth and the sixth line, or the first two lines of the second sentence. I have heard the song of the blossoms and old chant of the sea, and seen strange lands from under the orchard white sails of ships. In these liners, the poet continues his praise of beautiful things. In these liners, the poet talks about musical beauty. The poet talks about the musical beauty in combination, in combination with natural beauty. I have heard the song of the blossoms and the chant of the sea, and seen strange lands from under the white. sales of ships he says that he has heard the song of blossoms and chant of the sea in addition to this he has witnessed the surprising landers from under the sails of under the orchard sails of the ship the song of blossoms alludes to soft rustling music of the blossoms producer when the breeze blow through them the chant of the sea refer to the music created by ripples in the sea so now coming to the coming to the seventh and eighth line here we it looks a key transformation has been is being reflected here when the poet has used the word but but the loveliest thing of beauty god ever has shown to me or her voice her hair and eyes and the dear red curvy of her lips in these ending lines of the poem the poet's focus of praising beauty shifts from the beauty of nature in the first six lines the poet was praising the beauty of nature and beauty of music in the first six lines poet has talked about the emphasized on the beauty of nature and beauty of music but here the poet in expresses that the beauty of his beloved surpasses the all other beauties as the uh, as the poet has made comparison in this poem as i have already told you in the first part of the poem and before starting this poem i have told you that the poem is about the comparison of the beauties the poem is making the comparison he compares the beauty of his beloved with all the beauties all the bounties of the world and finds her uh, beloved as the most wonderful and the most beautiful in the world so that is why the poet says the but the loveliest thing of beauty god ever has shown to me or her was her hair and the dear red curvy of her lips he expresses that the beauty of his beloved surpasses all other beauties the poet expresses 
that though he has come through the most beautiful things of the world a very very beautiful things of the world he has witnessed different beautiful sights different beautiful um, and magnificent sights and uh, seasons and beautiful seasons that beautiful moments but all but the beauty of his beloved surpasses all these magnificent sights all these fascinating sights all these heart wearing sights all these pleasant sights all these beautiful moments the poet expresses that the loveliest thing of beauty god has ever shown to him or his beloved's voice the poet says that if he has come through any most beautiful thing in the world that is her beautiful her beautiful beloved her beautiful beloved's a uh, voice a very sweet voice her magnet magnificent her magnetic golden hair and her dear red curvy of her lips he says the dear red curvy of her lips the slow old tunes of spain the song of blasmus that the and that of the sea have been compared to the voice of the poet as blood her hair has been compared to the natural beauty and dear curvy of her lips have been compared to orange white sails of the ship from where one can see strange lands the poet had talked about the old tunes of the spain the song of the blasmus and chant of the sea he find them very beautiful and sweet but when the poet compares these sounds these musicals with the sound of with the voice of her beloved he find us her beloved's voice the most sweet a very sweet than these than the music of the spain than this chant of this than the chant of the sea and now the poet has also compared the poet here of her beloved the poet has compared her here his beloved is here to the natural beauty and her dear red curvy lips have been compared to the red white orchard sails of ships the poet perhaps alludes the poet perhaps alludes to touching the crimson lips of his beloved where from he witnesses the amazing experiences that make him forget all other beauties so in kanikulojan the poet seems to be enthralled and enslaved by the beauty of her beloved when he compares her with all the beauties of the world all the beautiful things of the world all the sweet voices of the world and comes to the conclusion that if he has come through uh, the beauty all the, if he has come through the beauties of the world then he had where well, he had find only the one the most beautiful that is his beloved so thank us for hearing me hope you will enjoy this poem you will enjoy the explanation of this poem again i will i want to request you please do not forget to subscribe my channel just press the subscribe button press the bell icon of this my channel to receive the latest notification about the latest videos and hope you will enjoy this poem though you will find a bit bit appealing or mass touching but the poem is really full of explanation and the, and the content of the poem is too much enriched with these pics so thanks have a nice day we'll meet again 
with you guys so thanks have a nice day stay home stay safe